Hello, and welcome to another edition In Between the Pages with James Live Jr. I'm James Live Jr. And I'm here talking about a book that I am in. It's an international number one bestseller on so many different lists on Amazon that it's very incredible. Um, and all the years, I've, I've written over 30 books myself, and over all the years, the first time this has happened, and it's because this one man is to the left of me, or to the right of me, however you're staring at this. And I'm so excited. Um, it started because of this guy, Cesar Arasmino. Hi, Cesar. Hey, how's it going, guys? How are and the you? Book is, and the book is called You Can Overcome Anything Despite the Barriers in Life, Volume 1. So, I mean, it's going to be others. This is Volume 1. And what's happening is um, there are several people out there who are taking group kind of people together and grouping them together for a common cause in book form. Uh, there's other series out there, too, that are doing the same thing. And so it's been a great thing where people can just share their stories uh, under the same kind of banner. And you, you can get the book, and you have to go from A to Z. And just, just pick a section and go from there. That's the great thing about this book. So we have some of the authors who are in here with us. There's, there's, there's like 16 of us, but there's a few of us who are here today, and I'm glad for the time. Uh, below him, she's in the book, Miss Stacy Shields. Hi, Stacy. Well, how are you? Good, good, good. Uh, good. And then... Below her, we're hearing some story about her off camera, was Lisa Kuntz. How are you, Lisa? Hi. To the other side, next to her, we have Mr. Nick Federley. Hi, Nick. Hey, how's it going, everyone? And then right above him, between us, we like the Brady Bunch. It's like really crazy. So I guess I'm either, I'm either Greg or Marsha. I can't tell which one I am. It's Roxana Zaya. Hi, Roxana. Hello. We, 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 are, like, we are like, oh my God, I guess, um, yeah. I get the, yeah, the two one, it was Marsha and Greg were on top. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Um, you know, this show, first of all, this show is on all streaming service platforms. Anywhere you find your favorite podcast audio, go there. Look under In Between Pages with James Live Jr. You'll find it there. And it's on YouTube on my online network. It's called JLJ Media. Go ahead and subscribe there. And there's over 30 shows from Star Wars to Soaps and everything in between. Go and check that out and see what, see what we're doing over there. So, everyone, first of all, I want to ask everybody, how are they doing during the strange COVID, social distancing, ha everything's half open stuff. I will start with uh, Stacy. How are you? How are you doing? Well, thank you, James. I am a very outgoing, extroverted person, and I love connections with my church family, my friends. Uh, I love hugs, and so initially, when we were told to stay inside and we can't have that like physical, I can't have that physical contact, the hugs and dinner with friends and church activities. I kind of withdrew a little bit. I was like, okay, this is just for a couple of weeks, right? So that's what I thought because that's oh, what they said. Awesome. It was just going to be for a couple of weeks. <laughs> and I was like, ah, I can deal with that. And then eventually it came to be that this was a more permanent type situation. And because of that, I have reached inside and gathered more internal resources and have found new ways of connecting with other people that are meaningful and helpful. And we just have to be a little bit more innovative. Yeah. And so Lisa, how are you doing in this time period? Okay, well, I'm a real estate agent, and so we're considered essential, and quite frankly, I'm killing it. Probably, people in Arizona are buying houses like they were buying toilet paper. Yeah. I'll probably have my best year ever in real estate. Wow, congratulations. Yeah. Okay. That's great. So, um, it's business as usual here. A friend of mine who's a real estate agent here for Compass in Beverly Hills, he said they switched to virtual. And so with some effort, you know, once you see the, they do the, they got these beautiful, gorgeous cameras and drones and they're going in there and taking pictures of the homes. And then at the end, if you want to see it in person, then they do the whole social distancing thing. One person goes with the mask. But I, I feel like real estate, people still buying houses. They're buying houses. That's like, that's not even, I'm not surprised. Yeah, the best part about it right now is we don't have any tire kickers. So anybody who's out buying houses, they need to move. Yeah. So, um, it's not unusual for us to see full price and above um, ask offers and yeah, things are going and it's going, it's almost frantic and it's almost too much where you can't even breathe. You know, you go, 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 go. I'm probably working every day, 18 hours a day. Yeah. Okay. It's crazy here right now. Okay. Roxanna, how are you doing during this time period? Well, 
it's kind of funny because I actually am loving it. <laughs> I mean, I get to do all the things that I've put on hold. Like I get to organize my cupboards. <laughs> I get to go through my closets and purge what things that I don't want. I mean, I'm actually taking time, but I'm also enjoying the ability to get creative. I've been writing for magazines. I just got requested to write for a second magazine. I've had interviews. I, I had time to write um, for different projects that I'm working on. And something that you may not know is I actually own restaurants as well. So because it's closed for to go only or outdoor only, I don't really have to spend a lot of time there <laughs> focusing on it. It's kind of running itself. And um, so I really am enjoying it, getting creative with my coaching business and expanding that part and writing. I'm really having so much fun, actually. <laughs> I mean, it is forcing many of us to be, you know, I, I work in Hollywood to shut down the first three or five, you know, five months. We're not really fully open. It forces us to figure something out. These guys got, got to figure it out. And Mr. Federley, how are you doing during this time period? I would have to uh, agree with Lisa. I'm busy as busy gets and my life has not changed. It's, it's got better. Wow. Okay, that's 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 good. Okay, that's good. And then Caesar. I mean, I know you, but how? So how are you? How are you doing this time here for those people who are watching and listening? Yeah, definitely. Right. No, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm, first and foremost, thank you for for having me and for having us all here. I'm so excited to to be here in your show as always. But yeah, you know, it's it's one of those things where like I. I don't even pay attention to that. I mean, there's a lot of noise, a lot of ne negativity, and I try to focus more on what can I do today to make a difference? What can I do today to just change my my life, period, right? And so I, I would say it hasn't really made that big of an impact in terms of me personally. Uh, the, some, uh, some of the things that I was doing got hurt for sure, you know, just like I think many of us. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, I take it for what it is, and I enjoy it, and I'm having the best time of my life too, you know? Okay, it's good. Okay, so folks, um, this is this is we're recording this. Everybody's telling me people. I know people. I know they're in there waiting to come in. But it's a way to do this because I make it so it flows. I have some Lisa's waiting because they came in a little late. We're gonna let them in right now. I was aware. I was aware they were there. Um, but you have to do it a certain way. Um, they came late. So here to come in. There are more writers. We got all these Lisa's. We got three or four Lisa's on, on the show coming on. Let's see. They'll be coming on shortly. And the triple threat, on. Lisa. <laughs> Like, that's the name, everybody. <laughs> that's a name. So I'll be Lisa, 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 and Lisa. At least Lisa, 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 and Lisa. Okay. Sounds like Tony, 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 the, the 80s band. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You guys should all form a group <laughs> and do it. Okay. And so we're waiting for, I think, one more person. Who is that 90s? Tony, Tony, Tony. Yeah, they had a song. They had a bunch of like, Feels Good and Anniversary and all these things. They had a bunch of hits. They're from, they're from the Bay Area. They're from Oakland. Um, well, Lisa Manzo, welcome. So we'll say hello to you. We'll say hello to you. How are you? She's one of the writers. How are you? Oh, thanks for having me. I'm really great to, grateful to be here. Okay. And I was asking everybody, because we just started, how are you doing during this kind of strange time period in the world? You know, it, it's, um, it's a good time for me because it makes me slow down and um, reflect because I'm always rushing to do this and rushing to do that. And here it is, um, there's no more rushing because there's nowhere to go, there's nothing to do. So just slow down and, and just take, take, take a look at your life and enjoy what you have and be grateful for what I have. So that's where, where I'm at with this. Uh, I've taken to the um, idea of, okay, what's the lesson here for me so I can, I can learn it and move on. Well, you know, that's great. That's a great lesson for people, actually. I think, I think a lot of people are sitting at a chance to reboot. A lot of us thought it was a few a few weeks, right? I was, I was scheduled to go see my granddaughter for her birthday. And I was like, oh, I'll be there in a couple of weeks. I scheduled to change the flight and I'll be there. And then you know, that wasn't, I still haven't seen her. And it's been five months later. Um, so the day, that, the day that they shut everything down, the day, bef the day before they shut, our, I mean, the day after they shut everything down, my daughter was supposed to visit me and that was in March and they canceled her, her, her um, hotel and her reservation. And she's been trying to reschedule ever since. And she's in New York and she can't come because we're on one of those, um, we're on New York's list that um, she can't go to work for two weeks if she goes back. So she can't come visit me right now. Well, you know, LA is, is bad. It's, it's bad here. So that's why I can't see my kids and grandkids. My grandson's birthday was yesterday. I couldn't see him. We had to do it through Zoom. 
Um, yeah, and my daughter got married a few months ago. Couldn't go, couldn't go to the wedding. It's all, it's all just weird wow. stuff. It's, it's, really, it's really strange. And and so it's been a really, and my birthday was during this time period. Anybody have birthdays during this time period? It's really strange. I had a birthday during COVID. It was not fun. I had not a good time. I was busy by myself. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I ate some food and I ate and drank, but that was about, that was about it by myself. Not fun. I came to see you like maybe three weeks after your birthday yeah. or something. Like he did. It was like, I mean, I was like just sitting at home and people were calling me and stuff. But it was like, it's so, he's like, go somewhere and do something. And I couldn't, back then I could, it was back in May. Couldn't do it back then. Um, I think we have one more person and I'm seeing that she's going to turn on her video or audio. Can she hear us? Okay, well, we'll see what happens. So we'll get, we'll get started. If she wants to come on, she'll come on. I'm going to start, actually start with Nick because he is one of two males of the group, you know, besides myself. I'm like, I don't tell. Um, and so, <laughs> Nick, so when Caesar came to you about contributing to the book, what sold you on contributing to the book? So uh, me, and, uh, me and Caesar kind of have a back story for a while. Um, so he's kind of known my story for a while, where I came from and uh kind of what challenges i've endured through my first 30 years of life <laughs> yeah. and uh and then he said he was working on this book project and i i said what well, man what a perfect way to get the story out there and um i believe he had to encourage me and push me a little bit because i was scared to do it or a little nervous to do it at first um but then i just did it and grabbed the bull by the horns and went along so do you think that people who are young do have a story to tell? People that are young? Mm -hmm. I do. Um, I think a lot of it depends on their upbringing, um, if that makes sense in any way. I, I think that some, some younger people have, they're kind of given things on a silver platter these days, um, where that was not the case for me. So if I think if you're coming from that background, there's definitely stories to be to be told that can res resonate with other people. Yeah, where are you from? Where are you living? Uh, Minnesota. Oh, I'm in, oh, Minnesota. I love Minnesota. So you so you survive those brutal winters. I don't know how you guys do that. I, I got, hate. I got stuck there once. So. <laughs> One of the other authors that's not here, uh, Carmen. She's also from Minnesota. Oh, two Minnesota. Two Minnesota. Okay, yeah. two Minnesota. Okay. Very good. Surprised you uh, couldn't catch that from my accent. <laughs> kind of. Now you're talking more. You haven't talked so much. Like, oh, you betcha, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you, you, didn't, you didn't talk that much. I couldn't tell first. Now, as you talk further, now, now, now we hear it. Uh, mm -hmm. that's right. um, and so now, when you chose your story to, to choose to put in the book and you saw it in print, how did that feel? You know, to be honest with you, I have not read my own chapter yet. Okay. It's kind of weird. Because you lived it. Because you lived it, right? You lived it. Like, right. And, and I think that, I think once I read it, I'll end up having more ideas to follow up that chapter. And I got so much other things on my plate right now that it's like, I, I know if I do it, it's going to drive me nuts. And then I'm going to have to start writing again. So... <laughs> That's a good. That's a good problem to have, Nick. It's a good problem. It is. Many ideas. Oh, who, who says that's not a problem? That's a. That's a great problem. So I'm actually waiting until I get the paperback copy, and then I'm going to read it. So okay. that's legitimate. I have a lot of friends who don't watch their own like shows. They do TV shows. They just don't. They don't watch. I watch myself because I love myself. <laughs> no, um, I watch. I watch myself sometimes just so I can see like things and like did I go well? Did I did I have a face in my? That looked a little weird. Um, my lot of friends they don't watch. They don't watch themselves. They like they don't they, they, they do it they lived it and then it's like there it is for the public so I understand mm -hmm. that Nick I understand that now I'm gonna pick I pick a Lisa 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 what is Lisa Coots well oh no oh they say like oh Lisa Coots first then Lisa hey, so, oh, happy birthday is it her birthday I don't know I thought you said it was her birthday no we were talking about we had birthdays during quarantine so it's uh, like quarantine. Right. It's my birthday year everybody have a year hey, Lisa <laughs> yeah that, how Lisa's well Lisa Coots so I mean so how do you know Caesar and how this come how this come to your orbit. It's funny. I was trying to remember. I think that he and I have a friend in common, and she proposed that we do some sort of match where you send a book to the other person. And he was my match. 
So then I Facebook stalked him. I mean, I investigated. <laughs> <laughs> what I meant to say. That's what us women do. We investigate. It's not stalking. No. So I, I investigated him on the book of the face and I saw that he travels. And so I'm like, oh, I think maybe um, he would like a travel book. And just so you know, I never got a book from my person. That made me feel sad. It wasn't what? there. Wow. I, I never got a book. Anyway, um, that's how that's how we met though, right? And you were yes. my guy. And then yep. you got my book though. I yeah. did. I did. I love it. I'm, I'm already going to start checking out the place that I need to go visit. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm an avid traveler. And so that's why. Yeah. So yeah. And so then I saw your post um, on Facebook about mm -hmm. book and I'm in the middle of writing my own book. And I thought, you know what, maybe this will get me going and, you know, kick me in the butt and get me to finish. And so, um, yeah, so that's how it happened. Now, uh, now for you, how hard was it for you to choose your story that you put in the, in the book? It, it actually was difficult. And I, I did go over some stuff with a friend and we were trying to decide. Um, and so a lot of mine was cut and paste because I, I have a pre-existing book that hasn't been published because it's not finished. But um, I wanted to stand out. And so I knew that there were a lot of other wo women. And so we were trying to decide or trying to guess, what are the other women going to write about? And so, you know, like I married this crappy guy that was in the army. And so we thought, well, well, some of them talk about that, maybe. So, okay, we'll talk about, we'll just talk about him in the book. He'll have his own special chapter in the real book. He'll like that because um, he's a cheater. And so, so like, okay, not that. So <laughs> the shade is real, folks. The shade, I'm tea ready. The shade is real. Like, oh, um, oh, and he's in the I'll FBI. Read. They're gonna love the story. I can't, I'll read your book. I can't wait. I'll read that book. <laughs> so um, oh, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. I bet he can't wait either. <laughs> <laughs> Should have misbehaved. Yeah. Send him a signed copy. <laughs> I love it. You know. Send him a signed copy. Yeah, you have to sign the chapter that he's about, not the front of the book. You have to sign the I chapter. Put a sticky note in it, right? He could just go right to his chapter. Yes. Yeah. Read here first. Start from here. Cheating oh, yeah. army officers, just go to chapter eight. That's you. Yeah, you'll know Be where to go. Careful, because he may want royalties. <laughs> That's so funny. Right? That's so funny. I think we got a similar story there, Lisa. <laughs> Uh oh. Uh -oh. I used to teach a private you also married a guy yeah. that was in the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> not that, not that part. Not that part. <laughs> this is a fast group here. A fast group yeah. here. Are we have first know, well, So I just chose, um, I just, you know, I tried to make it different so it wasn't redundant. Yeah. And, um, and I suspect, and I haven't read all the chapters. Actually, James, yours was the last one that I read. I tried to read one a night. Okay, because my husband loves it when I turn on the light when he's trying to sleep. He's like, this is awesome. How long will this chapter take you? <laughs> and mine isn't that long. Just talk about turning. My, my chapter is about turning 40 and changing my whole life. So you know. Yours was very quick. Yeah. And actually, Nick is up next on my book. So that's kind of oh, funny. Yeah, exactly. um, I'm not going in order. Um, but um, so, yeah. So I tried to do a chapter that I felt would not be redundant in the book. And, and um, so I just picked and cut and pasted a little bit of my um, existing book. Sure. Now we have a person, another person, another Lisa joining us. <laughs> it's like this explosion of Lisa's, Miss Lisa Lewis. Hi, Lisa. Hello. Now I'm going to ask you, because I asked everybody else already, how are you doing during this whole quarantine time, strange time in the world? Well, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Well, actually, um, I'm having one of the best times of my life. I want it, it to be... A slower pace, not have to get in the car line. I only uh, have one son um, at home. He's 11. And so I was kind of complaining about that. But so now I don't have that because we're doing, we're choosing to do uh, homeschooling. And uh, this time has allowed me to not only contribute to one book, but two. And I've been wanting to do that for over 25 years. So, you know, unfortunately, you know, the, of course, the lives and everything that has been affected by this pandemic, you know, my heart goes out to those families. But personally, for asking me, it's, it's one of the best times of my life. Wow, very good. And by, I'm finding out that a lot of folks are actually thriving. And I say this all the time, there's always a lot of crisis and tragedy, beauty and creativity can be born. Some of the best books, some of the best movies, some of the best songs are born out of stuff like this. 
So you know, you know, creativity Absolutely. abounds. So I think that's that's, that's a great so I'm yeah. getting that message. Uh, Roxana. So how you know how you and Caesar know each other and, and got involved with this book? I met Caesar in person at a um, another event. It was a really like a transformational, another transformational company, right? And um, where we were learning about business and and ourselves and our mindset and all that stuff. And <clears throat> I went there alone. And Caesar was was friends with this group of people who just immediately warmed up to me, invited me to lunch, asked me to, to join them basically for the whole entire weekend and seminar. And I've been bonded with him ever since. We've dabbled a little bit in real estate. We deal, dabble a little bit in mindset. And we've just, we're so connected. We're like, um, it's like I've known him my whole life. I really feel such a connection with him. Okay, so I think about Caesar. I think about Caesar Espino. So I, I met him through some other social media we knew also. And Caesar, I'm like, I'm a giant compared to him. He's like this little tiny thing. And I'm like a huge <laughs> giant, like, oh, you know, like just like, I'm from a China shop. I'm like six for 12, whatever, and 8,000 pounds. And you meet him, I'm loud. I'm like, you know, all this stuff. And I meet him, and he's one of the nicest people. Like, he really is like one of the nicest, unassuming people out there. But he's, but he's, but he's doing stuff, like he's doing stuff. He's making things happen, and he's so easy to work with. It's like it's so funny. You meet him; he's like you've known him forever. Like I feel like I've known. I only known him what a year, maybe. I guess even less yeah, than a year. Wow. I don't know how long I've known you, but I feel like I've known you forever. It's it's really it's really incredible how you say that, Roxana. How he's just like this guy. You're like oh, okay, he's just not just part of the family. It's so easy to warm up to. Really, he just uh, when you meet Caesar, you just feel like you're part of his family. You do. You do. And so now he asked you to be part of the book. And so how was it for you picking your story? In the book? Well, I was thrilled with this opportunity because I've always wanted to write a book. And, you know, of course, we, we limit ourselves. It's natural to think, oh, I can't do it. I can't write a book. There's no way. I don't know how. Where do I start? How do I get an editor? What about publishing? I don't know. What do I get to pick a picture? You know, like all these things, you know, title, this and that. I thought this was ideal. It was perfect co-collaborating. Wait, that's kind of an oxymoron. Like collaborating with all of you guys. We know, <laughs> and, you, we know what you mean. We know what you mean. <laughs> and I could just, I could just, get my feet wet by writing a single chapter. So I decided to just start from the beginning of my life. Okay. And knowing that it's gonna be a volume, you know, I will probably be opening up the next phase of my life. I am involved in the next one as well. Oh, well, very, okay, go on girl. Okay, very good, very good. Okay, some more from Roxana. Now I'm gonna say Miss Stacy up there, I forgot about you. How do you know Mr. Espino and, and get involved in this book? Hello. Well, Caesar and I have just recently met a few months ago. We are in some mindset training and coaching together and we connected on Facebook and I have been contemplating writing my story for over a year. And like Roxana said, I wasn't sure exactly, first of all, what would my message be? Because there's a lot of pain and there's a lot of hurt and I, um, one of the key members in my story is deceased. So how am I going to honor her? And also, um, just to honor the people, the people that have hurt me in the past that I've healed from. And so when Caesar offered this, Hey, one chapter, um, I'm going to do all the editing. I'm going to do the publishing. I'm going to hear, be here to support you. That was a no brainer for me. And in regards to the information that I wrote, that was very scary. That was really scary. It's still scary. Well, I was asking, has it, has it provided any healing for you, writing it? It has provided some healing, and it's, and not only for me, but I have two sisters, and when one of my sisters read my story, she said, I felt like I was reading my own life. Of course, she was right next to me, and so that validated for me, what I was experiencing was real. It wasn't just made up in my mind or I wasn't exaggerating. Um, and so that, that was very healing for me as well as for her. Yes, yes absolutely. That's yep. great. That's great. I, love to, I love to hear that. Sometimes walking through it. Um, yes. Healing. And, you have to walk through it. 
And Nick, I haven't read my full chapter either. <laughs> so, it makes sense. I, yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> I mean, it makes make that no, that makes sense to me. I told, I totally get that. I understand that. And now Lisa Manjo, at least Lisa's. Uh, so, how you know Mr. Cesar Espino and get involved in the book? So I met Cesar almost two years ago at a personal development um, seminar, and we we and we went to a couple events, and then we we like it, it was an evolved friendship. And oh, hi, Cesar, how are you? Good to see you. And slowly we evolved. And a year ago, May, I moved to Vegas. And Caesar happened to be in Vegas and we're hanging out at the pool and I'm sitting at the pool and I'm saying, hey, Caesar, I'm going to be in this book. You want to be in it with me? He goes, yeah. So, so I sent him the information. And so we're in a previous book together. And then Caesar liked the idea so much. He took the idea and he's done a phenomenal job and blew it away. And last year I was a published author and this year I'm a best-selling published author. And that is awesome and she's a rocks and it's so wonderful the rocks <laughs> yeah yeah you're all <laughs> our best-selling authors everybody everybody yeah. here everybody who's not here we all are and so and so and so lisa so um have you have you read your chapter and not everybody someone there in their chat you read yours well i read it when i was editing it so <laughs> i didn't need to read it again when it's in the paperback i know what it says I so no and I haven't read it, and I don't plan on it because I know what it says. Uh, has anybody close to you read it and give you feedback? So, um, yes, um, I I've sent it to my mom has read it, and my mom has read it, my aunt has read it. Okay. My kids don't want to read it. They're you know whenever they're ready, if they want, it's there for them to see. They're they're not in it um, because this is my story, not their story, and they would have to tell their story. So I've told about things and about me, and it was very healing. I heard you ask that question before. I told the story because I, f I felt so alone and like I was the only one feeling this. And you know, that's ridiculous because um, we're never alone. And that's why my title is Delusions of the Mind because I had this idea that I was in this all by myself. And I'm like, how ridiculous is this? And then, and part of the journey of healing and what I'd done in the last year to, uh, move out of that I'm alone and I'm because I'm I'm not alone I have all these wonderful people in my life and it's been a great healing experience for me is it funny how we do sometimes fall into that where you think you're the only person going through this one thing it's, it's so unique to me that no one else could possibly be going through it you go you go through it, then you wake when you come out and you're like obviously that's not true um, everyone's unique, of course, but the same, we have a lot of sim we have a lot of sameness. I find that out a lot. Of, a lot of these stories, that we all have a lot of sameness. We, we want the same things. We're missing the same things. We're seeking the same things. It just may look different for each person, and maybe the way you go about it is different. I, that's what I found. So, so it's kind of funny you say that. It's like you know, it's your it's your story. Now, of course, LL down in the bottom, Miss Lisa Lewis. How do you know Caesar, and how do you get involved in the book? <laughs> Well, um, I, I champion what everyone else has said. I, it feels like I've known him a long time, a lot longer. We, are, we met on Facebook, and so we've been friends for, I think, it, at least a year. Uh, and we're in some of the same um, groups um, on Facebook. And so um, when I heard about it, this opportunity, I reached out to him and we had a call and I decided from there that I, you know, I wanted to um, join all of you co-authors and, and write my story. So since it has been out, no, I have not read it, but I, I, I do know what it says and I plan to. Once I, you know, once I get a little breath, I plan to, to do just that. Maybe next week when I'm in uh, Polly's Island, I'll sit back on the beach and read it. So. Taking us. <laughs> going to an island? Like, going to an island? I'm like, okay. Come on down. Speaking us. <laughs> I was like that. I'm like, okay, you guys just going to Time an island. Retreat. Let's go. <laughs> Move trip. Right. Move trip. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Um. So mm -hmm. for all of you out there, we'll get to Caesar. We'll get to you, of course, because you're the big man. We'll get to you, and so I got questions for you. But for everybody who's been involved in this book. What you know, like kind of what does it bring to you to this whole experience? How's it been for you that to actually be involved in this process and actually have something out there you can share with people and sharing your story? Um, and anyone can take this first. Whoever wants to go first, take this. It's open. 
I would love to say, first of all, I learned community. I got to know all of you folks here on the screen so much better than I've ever known you before. That was incredible. But also that I can be an example, like a leader for other people, people who don't think that they can go out and do something as crazy as writing a book or starting a new career or trying a new hobby. Like I like that's what I like to do with my life. I like to lead by example and say, if I can do it. And trust me, if you read my story, you understand, like I went through, a lot. I live in a war, you know, like if you can overcome war, you can overcome anything. And so I, I, that's what I got out of doing this opportunity is that other people can achieve things. And I look at all your stories and like how incredible your stories and where you came from. Caesar's story. I'm like, gosh, I read your first book. Like, mind blowing. Yes. Nick, what are you, are you shaking your head? Yes. Are you feel kind of the same way? Or how do you feel about it? For the most part, I think, uh, I think being part of this has gave, gave me motivation to do more. Um, so it's almost kind of one of those things where you, you find every excuse in the book to procrastinate on doing yeah. what you're actually called out to do or think you're called out to do. Right. And, um, a lot of the stuff that, that I've been through in my life, a lot of people don't even go through that in their entire life. And I went through it in a matter of like 12 years. So it's, I've always had that vision to do something, but never knew what. And then this year I said, Hey, you know what? I'm going to write a book. That's going to be my first step. And then obviously this opportunity presented itself. I ran with this opportunity. Um, and then from there, I've actually put things in place to go even further this year with it. So that's kind of what I've got out of it is just the, the spark and the motivation that I needed. Absolutely. That's exciting, Nick. That's exciting. I'm, I'm happy for you. That's exciting. I, I love promise. Love the promise of things. That's a, that's a great thing. I mean, as long as you wake up every day, you can, you can do something, right? There's a chance for something. Right. Now I, now I got to learn how to public speak because I got a couple gigs for juveniles in the detention center where I once was. So yes. good. good for you. You could do it. I have, I have the most be a little nerve wracking. <laughs> It's, but, see, I always tell people because I've never been a shy person, so I don't really, I came out the womb talking, I guess I heard. Um, but I always tell people it's completely, my mother said all the time, you were, you're so loud when you were born. Um, I always tell people just literally, you have a story to tell, you know your story, you know what you're going to say, just go up there and do it. And you'll be so, you'll be so good. It's like, it's, it's, I mean, they say public speaking is the scariest thing more than getting in a plane or other things. I always say that's the one thing I just really, just, you know, I'm like, it's, it's a lot of fun, actually. You're telling your story. So I'm going to give you a pep talk. You, you can do it. You'll be fine. This me gets me good. Just tell your story. Tell your story. Give them something to think about. Give them something to listen to. Because um, you are an amazing person. So they, they need, they're going to see, they're going to see that. Gonna Thanks, see James. That. You're welcome. You're welcome. Lisa Coates. So I was asking a question. What, so what, you know, how do you feel? Um, it's, it's funny when, when I first, when the book first came out and maybe toward the end, when, um, we were talking about like, um, adding in what our websites were and that sort of thing, I started feeling like maybe I was in the wrong book and I was like, I don't, I'm not sure what, where, like what I overcame and then what's so special about where I landed. And so I didn't feel like um, I was doing anything particularly important right now. I mean, I guess I'm vertical, so there's that. But, you know, so I, I, I'm very matter of fact about where I come from and what I endured. Um, and it doesn't always occur to me that the fact that I finished college or that I live in a nice house and my kids are normal and nice and that I'm successful in real estate. It, it didn't really occur to me that the likelihood that that happened wasn't that high because of where I come from. So then, you know, when we were asked to provide um, like a little bio at the end and then, you know, um, a website and I thought, Oh, why do they want my, 
email address for real estate, you know? Everybody's a realtor, let's just face it. I mean, I'm a really good one, but I'm just saying, like, everybody's a realtor. So I, I started thinking, oh shoot, I'm not sure I'm in the right book. I, I think that maybe my story is, is, uh, is too personal and the outcome isn't very um, impactful. But it was too late because I already did it and I, I already gave him some money and I don't want to give it up. So I'm in the book and I'm getting some feedback now from those close to me. And what I did was I purchased, I think, 25 copies. And then I sent out a Facebook post and I said, I'll give these to you guys free and then everybody else has to pay. So very quickly, those 25 copies were claimed. And now I'm getting feedback from um, people and they're, uh, it's a combination of awe and mortified. And so now it's making me second guess the rest of my book because I'm so matter of fact about it. And they're like, um, uh, holy hell, Lisa, I, I did not know that. Because I am, I'm just, I'm a survivor. And I just think, well, duh, of, of course I'm okay. And so I'm, I'm struggling with, with the feedback right now because people are overwhelmed by what I wrote. And so I don't, you know, I'm like, do I tone it down next time? But it's a truth. My thing, don't tone it down. You write your truth. Let them, you my chapter. <laughs> let them figure it out. Seriously. You read my chapter and you tell me what you think. Let them figure it out. I talked about I other tell you that is amazing. I'm saying in other I've done other I've done speaking engagements, other books. I've talked about being raped at knife point. I've talked about being having guns to my head by police. I've talked about all kinds of stuff. Okay. Tell your truth, shame the devil, just let them figure it out. Exactly. They'll all they'll all handle it. The way you need to handle it. But exactly. you tell, do not censor yourself. You tell you tell your story. That's my all right. And I, I, I got I'm her here, so I'll tell you that's what you should do. It's all my advice. Oh, and, and I, I got to tell you this. I mean, I obviously I've read all the chap all the chapters, right? All the stories. And when you when you look at each one of you guys, and that's that's what I love about this, right? That we are all people from all walks of life, really coming with a unique story, a unique message. There's 7.5 or over 7.5 billion people. And I got to tell you that your story is going to resonate with somebody and that story can change their trajectory of their life. And that's where I'm like, yeah, I wouldn't hold back. I'm with you, Lisa. When I first wrote my first book, I mean, I was telling myself, who's going to read my book? Who am I going to inspire? What is this going to really do? And I was self-doubting myself and, and I was talking myself out of doing that book and I'm glad I did because after that, yeah, I mean, there were some people that were not happy about the story and they were like, whatever. There were, but there were a lot more people that came back and said, you know what, your story, there was something in that chap in, in those chapters that really changed my, my life. And I want to say thank you. Number one. Number two, a lot of people didn't know that backstory of me. And when you, you're more open to it, I think people have come to, into your life and, and do more for you. So I, I, I would say always tell your story for sure. Well, each of you sitting here has affected positive change in the world. So you should feel proud of yourselves completely. And um, Lisa Manzo, you were very kind to me when you said you read my, my chapter uh, recently. Uh, you reached out to me. That was very, that's very, thank you. That's very nice of you. So it resonated with me because, um, and I'll tell you, so at, um, in my late 30s, um, I knew my marriage was ending. So <laughs> I went back to school and got my teaching license because I wanted to be able to do something to support my kids. And um, what I was doing before I got married, um, I didn't want to go back to. So I became a teacher at 40, found out I didn't like that. I became a nurse at 50. And then, and now I'm an entrepreneur and that's really where I'm supposed to be. And it's been an interesting journey. So I'm, I'm, I really did resonate with your chapter because I'm like, oh wow, he's somebody else who feels like me. I like, I like, people that feel like me. <laughs> well, you know, you know, we start, you know, I try to tell people, you know, I started later and I found my passions later in life. I'm in my fifties. I'm still reinventing myself. It's okay to do that. As long as I, again, I said earlier, I said to Nick, as long as you wake up, there's a chance for uh -huh. anything, anything goes. Uh -huh. yeah. so I thought, so I'm, I'm glad, Lisa, I'm glad that you, you said, I'm gonna keep going and, and, and change career. You find that career. You have time. You're not going nowhere. You find that Absolutely. career. Until it time's up. doesn't matter. I should change because I'm still going to be a day older tomorrow, whether I change or not. So I might as well change because then I could change everything. And if you met me, um, even a year ago, I was still struggling with depression. And now I'm on the other, I can clearly say I'm on the other side of it. 
Congratulations. Which is awesome. It's it's just such a beautiful thing. So, you know, it's it's not an easy journey, but it was one well worth taking. Now I'm going to say something because my mother um, got the book, and and when she saw the cover, because this does matter to some people, she said to me, "I'm so." I, I told Caesar part of this, but she said to me, "I love that it's diverse." I saw the faces. But she said, I saw the three black people that are on the cover. And I was like, okay, I know, I know I'm know, i one. And Miss Lisa is another. I'm like, who's the third black person? She goes, the guy in the corner. I go, that's Caesar. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I thought he was a light-skinned black person. I thought he was just one of our family, one of our cousins. I'm like, no, he's our cousin, but he's just not one of our cousins. So we had that. Um, that was a little, I told I said, Texas, you see her, I told you, saying my mother thought you were a black person. Um, but so the thing, why, and why I'm saying this, and I'm going to go to Lisa Lewis, why, why this resonated with my mom is that she was glad to see that all the stories were just one type of person. Uh, so my mom was like, thank you, Lisa, for your stories. So let me tell you, thank you for your story. Um, and so, so how's that? So, I, so I, I'm glad you're part of this book also. How's, and how's that feel for you? Which Lisa are you talking oh, Lisa, to? Lisa Lewis, Lisa Lewis, sorry, Lisa Lewis. <laughs> sorry, I'm Lisa, I know, Lisa Lewis. Well, well, James, thank you, and tell your mother I said thank you. That that blesses me. Um, I like you. I, I've my mother told me I was talking in complete sentences before I was walking. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I was born. I was born for you know to talk and and you know connect, and I love connecting with others. And so um, it's just given me the platform, this book, to uh, connect on a different level, you know? Yeah. And so I know that if it just reaches one individual and I can, my story can bless one individual, then I am, you know, fulfilling my purpose. And so I am just honored to, to do this and have this platform and, uh, like I said, uh, even though it's a global pandemic and, you know, lives have been affected, this has been one of the best times of my life it is, as far as accomplishing some things that I've always wanted to accomplish. And so I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm just thrilled. <laughs> I'm so happy. Good. That's so yeah. exciting. And mm -hmm. of course, not last but not least, not at all. But as, as we start to go before we go to Caesar and wrap things up, so your, your time is very valuable. Stacy. How has this experience been for you and how has it changed you in any way? Well, thank you again. This experience has been absolutely amazing. As a backstory, I had almost, I had been shot on the streets in New Orleans on the 4th of July in 1996. And I've taken that opportunity as once a year to do something, like to challenge, to do something exciting, something that is extraordinary that I might normally not do because you don't know when life is going to be taken from you. And this year, writing this chapter and putting my story out there was my 4th of July adventure. And in turn, the outcome is that now I am an international best-selling author. I also went through last week, I had begun a vision board earlier this year. And last week I put it together and in one of the cutouts I had was a picture of three books. And the purpose earlier this year was I'm going to write three books this year. And of course, yeah. at the time, yeah. this was outlandish to me. However, I have written my ebook and then this chapter and I'm signed up for chapter two or for the second book. So that is actually it just kind of all fell in line with the vision that I had put in the beginning of this year before I even met Caesar, before I even began this healing journey. And I just think that's an amazing story and how if, if we set our mind to it, if we, we put the picture in our mind that this is what we want to do and just take steps towards that, it can happen and it, it will happen. Small steps lead to large rewards, which is my saying in my company. Just take any steps a step. Yes. So, I mean, that's Absolutely. about it. Any steps a step. I mean, literally, any steps. You move forward when you make us take a step. You don't move forward when you don't mm -hmm. so you stand there. So, that's yeah. congratulations to you. That's a great, you guys are all amazing. Caesar, big guy. So, as you know, we're sitting here talking. The book is out, bestseller, all that. From when you thought about this concept, which I, you and I talked about it very early on, 
to now completion and it's out, has it done what it's what you were hoping it intended to do? Yeah, and, I, and, and tenfold, even ten times more. Um, I'm I'm so grateful just to be uh, part of the project and and be part of this group right here. Like like I, I'm very grateful of the fact that there were so many great people that wanted to be part of this um, project, and just the relationships and the connections and the possibilities that we can even do it between us, right? Even even between us, the authors, and not only that, just like reading every single story, I'm, I'm telling you, like. I, I know there's a message for somebody that they're going to pick up that message and it's going to change their trajectory. I believe that the quality of life that we expect to have tomorrow is based on the choices and the decisions that we make today. And deciding to be in this book, picking up this copy or being part of this, or even just doing some sort of work with any of us is going to change the quality of life for those people. And so I'm so grateful for that. It's like, you know, I always say in my practice about your thinking about your tomorrow self. Anything you do today, it's for your tomorrow self. It's you're looking out for yourself. And we have to look out for ourselves. So people who are getting this book, they're looking out for themselves. They have a commitment to themselves they're buying this book. And I think that's an amazing, amazing thing. And I'm just, and see, there's just, there's just so great you decided to do this. And again, you always try to affect change people's lives. And so that's a, that's a great quality to have. So thank you. Yeah, yeah no, definitely. Thank you. And so you say you're working on book two, and there'll probably be other volumes so at some point. So you're working on <laughs> yeah. two. So that's good. Okay. Yes. Good. Yeah, definitely. Look at that. Look at that. Now, everyone, thanks for being on this show. Everybody has their lives. They got to get to you. Um, I'm going to start. I'm going to call you out, and then you tell me, or tell, tell me, we'll tell the viewers and listeners where they can find you on social media or find you and your companies as so I'll give you a chance to promote yourselves. I'm all about self promotion, trust me. So we're going to start with Lisa Lewis down there. Tell me they can find you or your products or anything. Okay. Well, thank you again for having me on the show, uh, James. I really am honored and humbled to be amongst all of these uh, co-authors. Well, the best place to find me is on social media, and that's just at Lisa Lewis. Uh, so you can find me on Facebook, Insta, Twitter. Very good. That's the best place to find me. <laughs> Stacey Shield. We're going to yeah. find you. Yes, thank you. So you can also find me on social media, Stacy Shields. Uh, that's S T A C E Y S H I E L D S, as well as you can email me at Higher Mindset Coaching at Gmail dot com, and I look forward to hearing from anybody who has wants to connect. Thank you, Montana. Hi, so two best places would be Facebook, and it's just my name, Roxana Zaya, uh, super easy. And you can also go to my website, and that has links to all my other ways to get a hold of me. My website is freedomstarinstitute.com. Very good. And Lisa Manzo. So you can find me, my website is, uh, is www.thephoenixmind.com. My email address is lisa at the phoenixmind.com. And off my website, you can connect with my social media. You can book a clarity appointment, uh, ask me anything, a 15 minute appointment. And I'd love to hear from any of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Nick Federley, where can I find you? Well, I'm not as cool as everybody on here with a website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Some stuff that's still got to be worked on, right? And you're working on it. But uh, social media, Nick Federley, that's the best place to, to get a hold of me at. So for now, anyways, there's going to be other places in the next uh, month that we're working on launching. But I'll, uh, I'll let that cat out of the bag when the time comes. Very good. Now the accent's coming out. Lisa Coots, let me find you. Um, so social media, um, just so you know, it's Lisa Kunsa. Oh, Kunsa. Sorry, I said Kunsa. Okay, very good. Okay. Think of the author being Kunz. Yes. Kunsa. Okay, I like that. Yeah. Yes. And then you won't forget. So um, I'm on Twitter. I, I mostly use Twitter, though, to make um, companies behave when they misbehave. So um, probably not there, but I am there. <laughs> I love it. Um, British yeah. Airways and Samsung, they love I'm, me. I'm going to follow you now on Twitter just because of that. I'm going to find you on Twitter for You'll sure. You'll see. Um, Instagram, um, my personal page is Lisa Kunza. My real estate page is Lisa Kunza Realtor. Facebook, Lisa Kunza for personal and Lisa Kunza Realtor. 
for my business on Facebook. Very good. I'm going to go on Twitter. Literally, I'm just going to go on okay. Twitter. Okay. <laughs> Where can they find you, Mr. Espino? Where can they find Yeah, you? the best way, I would say my website, uh, CesarRespino.com. And then from there, you can connect in pretty much every single aspect. Or I am in Facebook under Caesar, uh, LinkedIn. Uh, I'm not in Twitter. I need to get on Twitter. Uh, Instagram, TikTok. Yeah, That's something TikTok. new, right? So I'm trying to get there. Oh, All right. <laughs> I'm too. barely getting there. And Snapchat. So there you go. <laughs> go watch them dance on TikTok while you're talking about houses. It's really crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and let's do it. Yeah, they're just like, they're just like I know you can move like that. Um, <laughs> tell folks uh, where you can find the book, Caesar, also. Yeah, um, I would say the book, you can definitely pick up the book at Amazon if uh, you want to get an autographed copy from your favorite author. Reach out to them individually, and then you can get your copy from them directly. Sure. All right, everybody. You can find me where all James Lodge Juniors are sold at James Lodge Jr. and all social media platforms. And I'm on TikTok too, actually. I just put a new TikTok on there about how do you super organize in under a minute. So I, I have little videos on there. And I did one with Baby Yoda. So go ahead and check that out. Have a good <laughs> laugh. Learn something at the same time. That's how, that's how we do it. This show is on every streaming platform you can think of. So from YouTube, which is my online network, we have over 30 shows. Uh, from soap operas to Star Wars to fitness and, and health, it's JLJ Media. JLJ Media on all like Amazon, Google, iHeartRadio, Spotify. This podcast, this will be on there under In Between the Pages with James Lott Jr. And we have a Facebook page of the same name. So go ahead. Anytime you find us, like it, comment. If you have questions for any of these, any of these authors, you can pass it on to me. I'll pass it on to them. Uh, it's not a problem. Share with anybody who needs to listen to this or see this. And please go out and get the book. It's good. It's a good book. Go out and get it. Reading is mm. fundamental. <laughs> I've heard that before. Yeah, sometimes. I'm, I'm, I'm showing my age. <laughs> like that. And yeah, everyone, so. please, 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 be careful out there. Show compassion to one another and take care.